Hello, my friends. Hope you're doing well. Um, I just saw a yellow school bus today, and I just, oh, Lord Jesus, help our children. Father, we pray that you protect our kids from the evil in this world. We just pray, Lord Jesus, for good school teachers that don't like what's going on, but we just pray the word of God would be in their hearts, that they would be so grounded in the word, protect them from any evil that's going on in the public schools and strengthen those that are homeschooling we love you we thank you in jesus name amen okay yes pray for our kids wow okay and i just want to encourage you those that are thinking about homeschooling because i've talked to so many of you and you said i don't even know they're not educating my children anymore they're indoctrinating them and it really takes way less time takes the teacher half the, half the day to get the kids in order. There's so many distractions. Oh, Johnny, sit down. Hey, oh, Susie, stop talking. But when you're homeschooling, you can really focus and hone in on their education. And there's such great material out there. Oh my goodness. I homeschooled like 40 years ago. <laughs> there was like two curriculums. Um, anyway, but you'd be surprised, my goodness, just how uh, kids pick up on things and just how they learn little kids how they learn from just playing um, reading you reading books to them doing blocks play-doh coloring never underestimate just free time that they, in fact they say kids just need free time to just do nothing and just to play or color or create anyway I'm praying so hard for our kids okay and I found something in a revival book but I want to read you the Word of God because his words are way more important than mine and I love this you know, when somebody's gone through suffering, you sit up and you listen. When a person's got a really cushy life, you go, yeah, you don't know anything. <laughs> um, good for you. But Paul the Apostle, this man has been through hell and back. My hair, okay. This is 2 Corinthians, probably some of my favorite scriptures, 4, verse 16. Sing the invisible. And you know what? How we need to train ourselves to think in eternity, to see the eternal, to see the heavenly. This is not real, what we see around us. Oh no, it's the heavenly realm. Remember when Elijah told, um, when um, Elisha said, oh Lord, master, we're, we're done for. And Elijah said, oh Lord, open his eyes. No, the enemy's done for. I love that when his eyes were open, because Elijah could see the uh, army of the Lord and camped around the enemy. And I wish we could see too. You know, we, we see what's happening in our government. We see America being dismantled piece by piece. But if we could just see God is in control, God is overall, God is calling the shots, God is allowing this, he's in control. So that's such a blessing. Okay, um, 16, therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Are we tired of exercising and diet? Our outward man is perishing, but the inward woman is being renewed day by day. Wow. I forget some of these creams or whatever. You're, you and Jesus, he's renewing your spirit day by day. And let me tell you something. Ugly in will be ugly on your face. Beauty in, beauty on your face. Okay? That's the real beauty secret. I tell my teenagers all the time. You want to be beautiful? Have Jesus shine out of your heart. Okay. We do not lose heart. The outward man is perishing, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. Okay, how much time we spend on our on our bodies. Um, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Wow. I love that old song by Keith Green, Trials Turned Into Gold. For each one that I lay down, a jewel is placed in my crown. Oh, such a blessing. These trials are working for us a far more an eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, I just said that, we don't look at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen, the eternal, the heavenly realm. For the things which are seen are temporary. Oh my gosh, hallelujah for that. Temporary. It's all going to blow over. It's all going to pass. Temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Train your eyes to look on the eternal. Okay, and then uh, verse chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 6 and 2 Corinthians. That was 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. 
Behold, now is the accepted time. Now, behold, now is the day of salvation. I'll tell you what, nobody's promised tomorrow. Get right with God now. Get saved now. Put away your sin now, because now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything, this is Paul again, that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, and distress. You know, just a thought. Um, you know how we can live a double life and really fool people that were so godly. W would you be doing that thing if, if, if a person were, were to walk into your house? If you're one of your group leaders were to walk into your house or somebody that you really respect? What do you do at home? I hope you're, you're at home the same way you are at church, okay? That you're not a phony, you're not a hypocrite. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. Don't be offensive to people, okay? The world is offensive enough. We don't want to be offensive. We don't want to be obnoxious. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. Oh, my goodness. We're just servants. I love um, watching Chuck and Kay Smith back in the day. They would clean the bathrooms. She, we would follow her in and, oh, let's clean the bathroom with, with Kay because that's what she was doing. Um, Chuck Smith, when, when he, were, he was on a trip, people would go to rush to carry his luggage. And he'd say, oh, no, I can carry my own luggage. I, and he didn't say, it's because I'm a servant. No, he just picked up his own luggage and didn't go on and on about it. But we're servants. How many times we see some of these people on TV, oh my gosh, they have their private assistant, they have their this, their that. No, we're not here to be served, but we're here to serve. And let me tell you something, you cannot give God. I love that old saying, um, joy. You know how you spell joy? Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. I love that. Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. We are ministers of God, servants of God, in much patience. Patience. That takes patience. I drove the kids to school this morning, and they're already fighting in the back seat. Oh, Lord, help. Patience. In tribulations, in needs, in distresses. You know, yes, we have needs, but God says, I will provide all of your needs according to your, my riches in Christ Jesus. The righteous will never be begging for bread. Isn't that a great promise? Somewhere in Proverbs 30. The righteous will never be begging for bread. In needs, in distress. Are you distressed today? <laughs> in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fasting. This is Paul, what he's, what he's, what he's been through. By purity, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness. Oh my goodness, just as you get dressed every morning, you don't go out of the house without clothes. Do not get out of bed without Jesus. Put on the armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Be praying, be in the word. Otherwise you're gonna be toast. Otherwise you're gonna be chewed up by the enemy. Satan comes to rob, kill, and to destroy. But when you have the armor on, you are protected. You're on the offensive. The armor um, of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor. By evil report and good report. As deceivers and yet true. It's sad that people, you know, say evil things about us and don't give us a, give a good report. But that's okay. You're doing it for God. God sees. God will defend you. Let God defend you. People say things all the time that aren't true. As unknown and yet well known. As dying but behold, we live. What a paradox. We're dying, but behold, we live. Wow. As chastened and yet not killed. Can I just tell you something? God spanks his own children. And if God spanks you, it's because you were probably doing something that you deserved spanking. Or you were going to run out in the street and get killed or eat something that you shouldn't eat. God's spankings just mean he loves you, okay? God only spanks his children. And he doesn't punish us, but he corrects us for our good. As sorrowful, here's another paradox. This is incredible. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Do you ever have moments where you're just, you're just sorrowful. You just see what's happening in this world. You see what's happening to your children. Or sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. You know, God, they're yours. God, you're the hound of heaven. God, you won't give up on them. God, you're going to... Um, you're going to win in the end. So it's just, wow. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Incredible. As poor, yet making many rich. Let me tell you something. You can have zero in your bank account, 
but you are richer in Christ because of what he, you're a joint heir of Christ. Everything you have is his. You're a joint heir of Christ. How cool is that? You don't have much money today, but you can, and you also make many rich. I love that. You are making many rich as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Wow. I <laughs> love that. I love those paradoxes. And I'm going to read you. This is an old, old, old book. Keswick. When, um, in England, when they had revivals, and that's what I, we named our America's Keswick here in Whiting, New Jersey. But they had all these, you know, pastors that came in and taught, and there was this revival that broke out. But I love this one particular thing. It's not a how how to or, or what what do I do but a who to but who are you Lord um, okay you are longing for blessing you have come here conscious of much in your life that is displeasing to God much weakness and vacillation much uncleanness much cowardice and lukewarmness you kind of dull today much self much dissatisfaction and unrest. Do you ever feel that restlessness? Somebody's restless today. Find your rest in the Lord. What is it that I need? You say, what is it that I need? Dear friend, just change the question. Not what is it, but who is it? Who are you, Lord? Yes, fall upon your knees and put the question as Saul did and wait till the master so reveals himself to you that all fear and doubt and hesitation vanish and you are able to say from the heart, you, O Christ, are all I want. Thou, O Christ, are all I want. More than all in thee I find. You know, Jesus doesn't just fill every corner of your heart. It spills over and then some. The words aren't even sufficient to say, yep, yep, Jesus supplies all my, yep, Jesus is sufficient. How do you put the ocean in a, in a, in a teacup? How do you do that? We, we just shame on us that we are just dry. We are a quart full when the whole ocean could be poured into us. We should be just overflowing and dripping over onto other people. You, O oh Christ, are all I want, more than all in thee I find. We are so rich in the Lord. Oh my goodness. Um, if you had a horrible, just ugh, task ahead of you or just, just something in your life unpleasant, would it make a difference if your favorite person or the person you adore or the person you love said, oh, I'm gonna go with you, by the way. Oh, I'm gonna help you, by the way. You'd be like, oh, when can we start? Things are drudgery when you feel like you're alone, but when you're with Jesus, Oh my goodness, you ever, ever be with your boyfriend back in high school? You didn't mind going somewhere that wasn't unpleasant because you were just with somebody that you just adored, okay? It's all a matter of who you're with, not what you're doing. I know some of you wish, oh, I wish I was on a desert island with no kids, no problems, and just a, you know, nice cold drink in my hand, <laughs> paradise. No, 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 you can be... Sadly, the uh, suicide rate in Hawaii, I was shocked when I heard this, is higher than most places. Why? Because people think if I go to Hawaii, all my pro if I can go to paradise, I'll be happy. No, 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 no. People get there and they realize, wow, because they took them, themselves with them. You are in paradise in the presence of the Lord. In his presence is fullness of joy. You need joy today in his presence of fullness of joy. Love that. So it's not a what do I need, but a who. No difficulties will daunt you. No service will be too tedious. No sacrifice too great for him. Then like Peter on the Sea of Galilee, when Jesus came to him walking on the water, you will say, Lord, if that is you, bid me to come to thee on the water. Oh, I look, listen, nobody wants to walk on the water. You want to stay in your nice, comfortable, dry boat. But if Jesus is calling you, get me out there on the waves. I don't care if, I'm, if I drowned, which Peter didn't. Jesus rescued him. Peter did start to sink when he looked at the waves, when he looked at the surroundings. He said, Lord, save me, the shortest prayer in the Bible. And Jesus, of course, you know, snatched him up. I love that. Can you imagine if Jesus said, Peter, I'm sorry, you're going down. I can't believe that you doubted me. 
You deserve to die. Goodbye. I'll see you in heaven. I know. She just pulled him out. Okay. When we saw him walk in the water, if you, if it be you, Lord, that is the question. Everything follows. I love this. Rather than a mere phantom savior, the creation of one's own inner consciousness, it would be better to cling to the old boat. Stay in the boat. If you're not really following God, stay in the boat. <laughs> the life of self-effort. If you're full of yourself, if you're trusting in yourself, stay in the boat. However painful and disappointing, but if a real, living, loving, strong Savior is standing there on the waters, it is most reasonable and wise to leave the boat and go to Him. Leave the boat and go to Him. Brothers, that real living Christ is always at hand. There he stands, victor over sin and Satan, vanquisher of death, your high priest, abundantly able to save. He's able to save you today. Touched with the feeling of our infirmities, able to comfort them that are tempted and exalted at God's right hand to baptize. You, you ever have a friend that you, she knows what I'm going through? They understand. Well, how much more Jesus? Jesus understands your pain, your sorrow, your loneliness. He was tempted in all points, yet without sin. He could have just come here as a phantom and just not have any problems, not be crucified. No, he went the whole gamut, the whole height of pain, rejection, loneliness, so he could understand you. I, I don't understand it. Um, okay, his people, he, he wants to baptize his people with the Holy Spirit. Cry out to him. Think not of blessings, but of Christ. It's funny, when you have Christ, you have all the blessings. Don't seek special experiences, but deal with Christ. Whatever the surrender Christ calls for, whatever the sacrifice he demands, it is always just a stepping out to him. You know what? It's worth it. All of us have been through some painful, painful things in our life. But if it gets me closer to Jesus, okay, it's worth it. A venture, no doubt. A venture unreasonable to one who knows not Christ but most reasonable when you learn it's the Lord. It's the Lord, it's, it's him, he's calling me out. When Peter realized that it's the Lord, I, I'm getting out of the boat. Come then, dear friend, away with your fears, your hopelessness, your unbelief. Are you in a tempest of trouble through suffering or affliction or bereavement? Christ says to you, I am he that lives and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of hell and death. I am the resurrection and the life. Said I not unto thee, if you would believe you would see the glory of God, amen. Look to him and say, if it is you, Lord, bid me to come on the water, step out and trust and encounter Jesus. Oh, I love that. I love, love, love that. That's the Keswick week. I don't know if you can still get this, but um, I'll read you all the good stuff in it. God bless you, my friends.